here to talk about building a successful business. And Patty, just tell me how much time I have so I can, because I, I went into the office today and I created these sheets and I gave them to Pat. And it's traditionally it's, we go for an hour, but if we go over. Okay, so we'll have the I didn't know if I had, the, okay, I didn't know if I had the whole hour. So if I do, so again, welcome all of you. And I, I'm imagining that you're all new licensed agents. Yes, right, correct, am I right? Now, during this whole entire process of, of me training and teaching you, um, I'm going to be stopping if you want to ask questions to me, please feel free. Anybody that wants to ask a question, just don't worry about it, you're not interrupting me. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna chart on course. We're gonna talk about setting goals. So everyone have this sheet in front of you. The second sheet, if we do get to it, it's great. I have space there for you to write in questions or any jot down any notes that I'm giving you. Um, if you don't, if you don't have, if we don't have time to get to that, we can do that at another time. I don't want you to feel jammed. Okay. And this particular class is going to be more of an intro on how to build successful business. Maybe our next class, I'm going to actually show you. I'm going to actually hands-on show you. It's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to actually implement it. So a little background about myself real quick. I started in this business 30 years ago. I walked into an office and uh, there's a reason why I'm telling you this. This is not about me, me, me. It's about telling you and teaching you how important systems are and how important it is to be accountable to yourself. How important it is to be very diligent, okay? Create these systems, but follow them. You have to be very, um, I, I guess the word is accountable. Okay, so I walked in. You have to form great habits, not good habits, great habits, and follow those habits. We all get up in the morning, we take a shower, we brush our teeth, we comb our hair, we get dressed. It's the same thing with real estate. Gotta do the same thing. So I walked into Coldwell Banker 30 years ago and I said, Do you mind? We had cubicles. I don't wanna sit at a cubicle. I said, I'd like to borrow a little office private. 30 years ago, we had phone books. Okay, I picked up the phone book and I said to myself, there's got to be one person in this phone book that wants to sell their home. Please, dear God. I made up a little script for myself. I started with A. In six weeks, I sold six homes. My first year in real estate, and I wondered, oh my God, Friday, I'm not getting a paycheck. This is crazy. I have three kids. My husband's working. I, I left my really good job, which I'm sure some of you can relate to this. And now I really don't have a paycheck. It's all on me. I have to really make my own destiny, create it. Well, I was tops in sales and production for my entire office the first year in business. Why? Because I created good habits. Okay. Now, another thing that I really never did, which I started to do when I came to this company, was being so diligent about prospecting, which we'll talk about that later. I used to make phone calls. I have a big referral business. You know, if any of you have a sphere of influence, you know, PTA, children in school, people that you know in your town, whether it's your church, your temple, wherever it is, any groups that you're belonging to or friends, everyone has friends, everyone's either moving. So get your name out there, get your word out there that you're in real estate. And if you're new and you're a little worried, how am I going to do this? Please write on the coattails of other listings in our office. That works. And we're very generous to share. I have so many listings. If they're in an area where you're really interested in starting, you can say, we, we, we. Now you become not just me, it's we. We have listings. You're going to go on a listing appointment. They're going to say, how many have you ever sold in this area? Our office is very active in this area. We've done a lot of business. We'll get to that in a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about that. But let's talk about the basics. Today's going to be the basics. So we need to set goals. We set goals in every stage of our life, right? We set goals, everything that we plan and everything that we want to do. So that's what you have to do. You have to set goals in your mind and your achievements and your ultimate goal and what it's going to be and how you want to continue and how you want to have the vehicle to get there. Al Donahue calls me an unstoppable train. I love it. You can't stop my train. I have so many goals. My train just goes so fast. If I told you today, I'm probably working on seven transactions today alone, okay? And I have a whole night of work to do. I don't have small children. I know it's hard. Sometimes I work till 11 o'clock at night on things, creating business for tomorrow. 
I'm up at 5.30 every day. That's the way it is. Right now, you, you guys have entered into a business that I haven't seen in 30 years. I haven't seen a business where I've had offers 60 to 90,000 over the asking. I've been in four cyclical businesses in real estate. We can almost predict what's going to happen. It's always for certain reasons. This is a very unusual, we might, not, we might not see this for another hundred years. Okay. I hope I'm here. And if I'm not, I'll be selling homes in heaven. But what I'm trying to say is right now you have entered in the best market ever. Like you stepped in it, guys, take advantage of it. Don't haste makes waste. Don't leave a hundred thousand dollars on the table this year. Okay, if you think about it, look at your table in your house, look there, look up on a shelf in your house, there's a high shelf or a closet, there's a box in there, there's a box on that shelf, it's waiting for you to take that box down and to open it up, okay, and that's what I'm here to do for you, I'm here to help you open up that box, don't be scared, don't be, oh my God, I don't know anybody, I haven't started, I haven't done anything, it doesn't matter. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. That's how I started. I walked in an office, never sold real estate in my life. And in six weeks, I sold six houses because I created my destiny. I had nobody to help me. Nobody coached me. There was nothing. I didn't know about a business plan. I didn't know about anything. I didn't know about prospecting. I created my own destiny. I'm here not to hold your hand. Okay, you're going to love to hate me and hate to love me. I'm going to give you all, everything that I, every tool I could possibly give you, I need you to implement it. Okay. I don't want you to walk away and say, oh, that was a great session. I want you to take what I'm giving you and really work it. I want you to work it. Every one of you. Okay. Leadership. You need to take the lead. You're the mother. You're the customer is the child. What does a mother do when you cross the street? There's a red light. There's a green light. You're holding the child's hand. You take the child across the street, okay? You don't say to your child, just run across the street. The light will change. Don't worry, sweetheart. You're the mother and, you're the, and they're the child. When you go into a listing appointment, you're in control. If you show you're in control, you'll get that listing. If you show you're scared and you're timid and you're not sure, you're not going to get that listing, okay? So you need to go in there with your full leadership capabilities. And that's what I do. When I walk into a house, I take full control. Immediately, I'll walk in and I'll tell them, you know what? You really need to paint your front door. I'm not scared. I'll tell them. I'm here. They want to hear that. You need to paint your front door. It has a lot of cracks. It's kind of faded. You know, that's the beginning of the story of your home when we walk in. If there's cat litter boxes, you need to remove those when we do showings. I come right out. Yeah, this, you know, your bathroom has, the paint is really kind of faded. I would paint the two bathrooms. I just did this on the listing. The man's like, wow, no one's ever told me this. That was uh, an expired listing I went after. Well, I'm getting a con I got a contract. I showed it last week and um, getting a contract. They're getting pre-qualified and it's my buyer. I told him exactly what he had to do to sell this house. He listened and we're getting a contract. Okay. So I took control. All right. I don't know if any of you have children. If you didn't tell your child to be safe when he goes outside and rides his bike, um, or not to run in the street, what's going to happen? They're going to get hurt. So we want to treat our clients with our control in a nice way, in an honest way and in a nice way. Now that's your leadership skills. You want to take, you want to chart the course, you want to stay on course and you want to get them to commit. Okay. Opportunity. Oh my God. There's so much opportunity out there. There's so much business out there right now, like I said, you have come into this business in the best time. There's so much opportunity. It's, it's gonna be very difficult to you, for you to realize the opportunity. Take it from the old crow. I've been doing this for 30 years. We, I, and I'll repeat it, I have never seen anything like this where we, we, I put a sign yesterday in front of one of my listings. I'm putting it online tomorrow. So they, they dropped the sign off, no, two days ago. I was supposed to put it on today. The gal said, please, Antoinette, my cleaning lady didn't show up. She's coming tomorrow. I said, okay. My sign is there. We're going to go on, not tomorrow, but the next day. Usually I only put the sign the day I listed. I've already gotten five calls. My son, Andrew, just called me and says, mom, one of our agents saw the sign in our office. She's got a cash buyer. Their daughter just bought around the corner. They want the house. They haven't even seen the inside. Okay. 
it's crazy right now. I have people calling from other states. Can we do virtual walkthroughs? We're moving from New York, Manhattan. We don't even want to wait. The Manhattan people are coming out like the droves. We've never had that. So that's like, that's a whole new market for us that you're going to need to handle. And I'm talking about Manhattan and I'm also talking about New York state. So if any of you have any, any people that live around there, you know, really work that, work that if you can. But the opportunity is, we're so surrounded with great opportunity right now that honestly, I can never wait until tomorrow. I have FOMO, fear of missing out, but I can't wait till tomorrow because tomorrow's going to be another juicy day. Okay. Um, business plan, we talked about plan of action, which we'll, we'll work on the business plan. But if you take of any of how Ben's classes, he will teach you things, how to clearly make your business very purposeful and very, very eventful and profitable. I didn't realize, you know, Hal taught us like what your expenditures should be. And I'll never forget my first family reunion, Diana Kokoza, um, who happens to be a very higher up in our company. And, and she said her first year in business, she made such a mistake. She made so much money, but she spent too much money. She spent too much money on things that she didn't realize were cut into her profit. And you know, how really taught me percentages. If you're going to have an admin, you shouldn't be paying them more than 10% of what you earn. So if your admin is making 30,000 a year, you should be making 300 or more. Okay. I'm using those kind of numbers to make it, you know, kind of easy, but so much I learned in so many of these classes that I never knew before. And once you apply them, they work, they really work. But the most important thing you have to do with a business plan is you have to start your own accountability. Your business plan is going to mean nothing. We can rip it up if you're not accountable to being behind that business plan. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. I'm trying to actually motivate you. And then I'm going to teach you actually direction on how we can get to our destinations. Prospecting. I still prospect. I have lists of prospecting that I go on the MLS. I prospect for sale by owners. That's a whole nother class that we can do scripts. I made up my own scripts, but the best part about prospecting is stats. Numbers don't lie. Remember that they don't lie. So if you have stats and you educate the person on the other end of the phone before they want to hang up on you, because they're going to think you're a soliciting call. You know how we get all these robot calls. I call up and I say, I know your house is for sale by owner. Please don't hang up on me because I've got valuable information for you. And I give them stats of what's going on in the neighborhood. Now stats meaning I give them actual sales that have closed within a five mile radius in their neighborhood. They love to hear that. Then I give them how many days it's sold. They love to hear that. Then I give them uh, how close to asking, asking or over. And then of course I have all the stats and the market updates and trends on what the mortgage rates are doing right now. So you need to go on the computer and you need to get market updates. That helps with your phone call. Remember. You're giving them something of value. You're not just calling them up to tell, you, tell them what a great agent you are and how you want to show their house and how you want that listing. Boom, they'll hang up on you. I'm giving them something of value. I'm giving them stats. I'm educating them. And I'm leaving them with something that they're going to remember me by. Remember, a for sale by owner and expired or just a simple withdrawal. All they want from you is unconditional withdrawal. All they want from you is one thing. Does anybody know what that one thing is? They want a buyer. Okay. So you're their vehicle to a buyer and that's all they want. So you need to go in there and say, we have buyers. Remember we, because you might not have buyers yet because you're new. We have buyers. I have so many buyers that are looking and I'm sure other people in the office have buyers. This is where your networking comes in. This is where you talk to people and call up people in the company and you say, you know, I have this listing or I, I know of this listing or I'm trying to get this listing. Do you have any buyers for Oak Street and Washington Township? It's a $500,000 range buyer. You know, everyone's going to have something. That's where Facebook comes in and all your networking and people that you know. Um, it, it's all about, a lot of it is about this business is based on communication. I'm kind of old fashioned. I don't do a lot of, I text when I have to, of course, 
but I love the one-on-one, -on -one, the eye contact, the 80-20. I like to, when I get off today on this phone call, I want to remember every single one of your people, your eyes and the color of your eyes. So I know I did my job. I looked right in your face, your face, your face, everybody's face. I know all the colors of your eyes. That's very important. And eye contact is very important. Remember, when you speak to your people, you want to give them something that they will remember you by, that you will be outstanding. Every single person, when I go back, because I'm up against a lot of the heavy you know, the high, pro the high producers, when I go on a listing, it's, it's always the same three or four of us. And it's like, I hope I get this listing. And when I walk out, I look right in my seller's eyes and I say to them, whatever decision you make is the right one. I hope I'm included. I hope it's me. I will get back to you. But I've left them a purposeful, I went there with a purposeful message. I leave them something of value and value is information confidence, experience, integrity, and honesty. And then I wind up talking so much sometimes about Keller Williams and our culture and our company and how successful we are as a team of agents. So you're not just hiring me, you're hiring the 200 people in my company. So that's, you know, I try to make us outstanding with honesty and dignity, and we are, but it really, really works. It resonates and it stays in their mind. And I always ask them, why did you choose me after I'm chosen? And they always say, you know, Antoinette, I think it was just your passion. It was your passion. It comes from here, from the heart. So that's, that's part of what I wanted to tell you. Number seven is research, market research. That'll help you determine on how your company plans to enter into the market. A lot of your, your sellers are gonna say, you know, what marketing are you gonna do for my home? Um, what's your strategy? Have your strategies ready. Strategy is we want to price your house. In this particular market, I'm going to be so honest with you. And I tell my clients, like I took a listing, it's coming on, it's five, 598. I had priced her at the, the comp came out, you know, the CMA. And I said, you know, we're going in at 548. She says, but Antoinette, I have it written down. You said 598. I said, yeah, I did. You're going to get 598. You're probably going to get more, but we're going to go in at 548. Because the last six sales I've done, I priced one house in Hillsdale for 739. I got up to eight and a quarter. We stopped at 800. Another one I did in Rivervale, we got 65,000 over the asking and that was in the 800s. And we stopped at a certain point. Unless you get your people to um, sign off and relinquish the uh, appraisal commitment, like they're not, you know, they're gonna like just get rid of it and say, okay, call their, call their mortgage broker and find out that they're qualified to carry this mortgage even if they don't get appraised, if the appraisal doesn't come in, who's gonna pay that difference of 50 grand that they're qualified to put in that extra 50 because my seller doesn't want to. Right now, they're willing to do anything. So the bottom line is, if you price it at 548 or if you price it at 598, you're probably gonna get six and a quarter anyway. So be strategic in this market. Be strategic, don't be scared. Okay, I call it, it's the S market. Be very, have strength, let's make it a seamless transaction, a successful one, a strategic one, and you're gonna sell their home with success. Is that enough S's for the day? Okay, they love all of that. You know, it's just all very strategic, but it stays in their mind. It stays in their mind. So number eight, we're gonna talk about proposals. These are ideas. These are services, things that you can offer from your business things that will put your client and put your action behind your words. I went on a listing last week. I'm gonna be listing her house in Rivervale. She needed a power washer. She needed a carpenter. She needed, um, I'm trying to think what was the other thing. She needed a painter. I have a whole list. She's like, wow, you really made this easy for me. I loved your power washer. He came and gave me an appraisal. I used the same guy. Oh, sometimes they need the, the hardwood floors refinished or they're really scratchy one room they want it done. I have a hardwood floor guy. So I have everything in order. If you think that you need somebody to do something like, I don't know, she goes, I don't know if I have termites. You know, it'll come up on the inspection. I see some signs in the garage. Look, if you want a termite person, let them come sooner, but it's gonna come up on your inspection and we'll just get it taken care of, you know, just wait it out. But I'm very serviceable. So again, when I leave my listing appointment, after I make suggestions about the painting, I give them my painter's number, they call my painter, 
And then I say, look, we'll list in four or five days, get the painter here. I want, I want to come out of the gate with the best, my best foot forward. I want to come out of the gate with the photos, gorgeous pictures. I take with me the videos that we do of the houses that I list with the drones. You know, you need to create an experience. You need to create, if it's a home that's kind of light with furniture or they've moved out already, um, I offer them virtual staging. I don't have, you don't have to pay anybody. I have a person that does virtual staging for me. It's $20, $30 a room. I do maybe three rooms. You need to create a finished product. You need to stand out and be different. Well, no one's ever told me that about virtual staging. You know, we moved our furniture out. We're halfway, you know, we're going down to South Jersey and I need to take my furniture with me. We want to move out. Don't worry about it. We'll virtual stage the house, you know, but I just want you to power wash it so it shines and looks really nice. And I want the cobwebs removed from the front door. So these are all things that, that you can do in your approach to make them feel really confident you know what you're doing. Okay. Number 10. Okay. Did we do number? Wait a minute. Okay. Let me just see. Number, that was the proposal. Number nine, marketing. Multi-tiered marketing. Marketing is very important. Okay. Marketing is gaining some of the knowledge of, of what's going on in the area of the house. You know, everyone lives in a different town here, I'm sure, right? So, Pick a town that you live in, whatever it is, and you probably want to start off in that town. You want to start off with people that you know, you want to start marketing, you want your name out there, put your signs, you know, they might know you when they're driving by or know of your family, or maybe their son or daughter went to school with you or something or your kids. So you want to get your, you want to start your marketing strategies. Now remember, Keller Williams, we're on over 360 websites. So we have, we pride ourselves on technology in this company. We are the most technology driven company in the world. We are agent centric. We are the most, the highest agent centric and in closed volume, we are the number one company. So if we are the number one company, you're a licensed agent, we need to act like we're the number one company, right? We need to have knowledge behind us. We need to have great marketing skills and I'll never forget this. And the reason I'm telling you this is it was 10 years ago, I was with another company 15 years ago and I went up against, and again, I've always been in the top three or four people in the area of production. And these are platinum producers. And I went on a listing appointment. I was referred to them and they knew me. They knew the people that I sent me and they, I knew them. I would see them at family parties. So right away, you're going in, you're making your presentation. It's, it's kind of in your pocket already, right? You've got the listing. But these were shrewd people. And they said, do you mind, Antoinette? We just want to get another opinion. I said, sure. Sometimes they like to do that to check the pricing. And I went in with my little bit of, you know, what I had, and I knew I was getting the listing. Well, I get a phone call the next two days later. They had a very big island in their kitchen. And I got a phone call, and it was another top producer that went in, and you know what they told me? He displayed her marketing material from one end of my island to the other. It impressed me so much. Remember, print is very strong. Yeah. You know, they say a picture is worth a thousand. Yeah. Well, Somebody has some money. background noise. Can you please mute yourself? Oh, she got the listing. She got the listing. I didn't get it. I knew the people. I was never mad or upset about that. But you know what? It was the best thing that could have ever happened to me because then I was never taught to have a marketing package. I would go in and use my mouth, right? show them all my listings, show them what things I sold, but I never per se showed them my marketing material and what I can do. She filled the whole counter. That was probably the best loss, the most valuable loss that I've ever had in my real estate career. And that's what this company taught us. Every time we come out with market trends, market updates, like you'll see tomorrow, we have a, a, a meeting, right? Pat, don't we have a we have our weekly or monthly meeting and you'll we have see our team meeting i think 10 o'clock 10 o'clock she'll come out with some stats she'll come out with some things from the mortgage companies sometimes our mortgage people speak they give us what's trends that are going on in the mortgage market right now well take all of these and create and i have if you need like a a package you know a, a, a copy of what i do you know things that i do and i create um, you know, that's something that you could be putting together later on for your listings, listing presentations. But right now, I really want you to concentrate on becoming a buyer's, um, working with buyers, because that's where you need to start. You need to start 
to work with buyers, learn the language, learn how to deal with the public, shadow on open houses, and then learn what we do as professionals and people with experience, shadow us, learn. Learn and earn, that's what I call it, learn and earn. All right, so that was number nine. We're gonna to go to 10, re review and analysis. And a successful business person is constantly reviewing and analyzing the effectiveness of both personal and professional level. And I call that growth. I analyze my growth all the time. Am I slacking? Am I doing something wrong? I'm not perfect, okay? I'm not perfect, but I have to tell you, I'm very diligent and I'm on myself. I'm very hard on myself. And I'm probably so hard on myself when it comes to this business, I'm relentless. This business is one big puzzle and it's putting pieces together and it's fitting buyers and sellers. It's fitting sellers to you. It's fitting buyers, knowing what the buyers, I was up at six o'clock this morning. The listing came out today. I emailed it to my person at six this morning. I showed it at four o'clock today. We're going back tomorrow. We're writing a contract. It's almost a million dollar house. I was up at six o'clock. That early bird catches the worm and you have to be on your game. The first thing you do in the morning is you get up, go get your coffee, your tea, go to your MLS, open it up, get a snapshot of what happened today and what happened yesterday. So you know what you can do for tomorrow or today. Okay. Your future of this business depends on you. I'm on the MLS all day. Even if I'm out on the road, I'm constantly checking new listings that are coming out, any deals that have fallen through, anything that was under contract and fell through. So you have to be on your game. Now, that's review and analysis, okay? It'll make you successful, okay? Number 11 is the close. You can refer to the actual closing of the deal, sale of the product or the service or achievement, long and short-term goals. The big close is why you're in business, why you wanna become a professional in this business. But remember, you never really finished. Growth is the ultimate goal. And in order for us to grow, we must continue to create goals. We must continue to reach those goals. But the only way we're gonna reach those goals is through systems. And that's what I'm here to teach you. So we went over everything here that will add value to your real estate life. I'm going to help you create a, a business that's worth owning and a life worth living. And Pat, Pat is wonderful at that. She's right on it. And, and that, that, that will be affected on the growth and success of your business. This second, any questions? Does anyone have questions? Does anyone want to question me or, Oh, Hugo, you're on. Hugo has been doing some open houses for me. Um, Hi. Hi, Perel, Hi. you're on also. Yep, yep, you've been shadowing. So you can see how important it is in this business to just like dive into it. You have to just get into it, don't be scared. Fear will always hold you back. Faith will always make you go forward, okay? It could be a fearful business, especially when you, you, know, you feel you could be up against um, you know, producers and you're gonna say, how am I gonna get started? You can get started. Everybody can get started. We all got started somehow. Okay. It doesn't matter how many hours or days you're in the business. It matters on how much passion you have for the business and how much knowledge you can project to your sellers and, and buyers. Yeah. If I could add to that, my experience has shown me those who embrace growth and change. That's and right. Antoinette is telling you she analyzes herself. She self critiques. It's those are the people who soar to the top. Don't be afraid to say, I've made a mistake. My God. No, right don't be afraid. Now, we've made some buttes. Some buttes. Don't, don't be afraid to slip and fall. Yep. Don't be afraid because in this business, I'm going to tell you something. Success in real estate is one thing. It's the people who fall, but the ones who know how to get up. Okay? This is the toughest business you will ever be in. You are creating your own destiny. If it's meant to be, it's up to me. No one's giving you a paycheck on Friday, okay? You either can make 100,000, you can make 500,000, 400,000, or $20,000 a year. It's up to you, okay? I'm very proud to say I've been very blessed because, you know, blessing is one thing, I'm blessed, but it's not that I'm blessed with the big numbers, I'm blessed with the drive and the love and passion for the business. If you love what you're doing, it's, it's definitely hard work because it's a lot of follow-up. 
But if you love what you're doing, everything just follows suit, everything. So we can go into um, the success of farming, prospect, prospecting, and lead gen. I, I want to go over everything with you. And then at another class, I'm going to actually physically show you. It was so great when we had in-person classes. I could sit down with little groups of three and four because I've been teaching, you know, classes for KW for a while in several of our market centers. And I have to tell you, I get such rewarding emails from clients saying, from, from realtors actually, not clients, from realtors saying, oh my God, Antoinette, I followed what you said and I just got two or three listings. You know what that does to me? That makes me so happy. It makes me so happy. What I want you to all do, I'm, take out this sheet, okay? Mm -hmm. And I put this together for you. I put both of them together. Um, shows you what a little bit of a nut I am. I'm up all night, right? Target specific neighborhoods, number one. So let's go, for instance, Hugo. Where are you, Hugo? Are you there? Hugo, what town do you live in? Hugo? Oh. I'm in uh, Westwood. I'm sorry, I was unmuting. I'm driving at the moment. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not going to talk to you then because you're driving. I want you to concentrate. Okay, I want you to concentrate. Laura? Well, I just want, I just, you can listen to Laura. Laura, what town are you in? Laura, what town do you live in? I'm in Fairlawn. 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 Okay. So in Fairlawn, I, I would love for you to target that area and I'd love for you to become a preferred agent in Fairlawn. I'd love for everybody to know your name through Fairlawn. I'm sure the area that you live in, you have a lot of friends, a lot of people, your parents, your family knows. You can become and you should try to target within a five mile radius of where you live and in Fairlawn, pick certain sections. I know there's Radburn and there's different mm -hmm. sections in Fairlawn that are desirable, um, different communities, and you can become the preferred realtor in that community. So what you should target is, and you should look up expireds tonight, mm -hmm. do this. Go to Fairlawn, mm -hmm. look up expireds, not just yesterday or last week, Look up expireds from two years ago. I want you to call some expireds from two years ago or a year ago. First, you check them. When you go to history, you go to tax search. So you look up Broadway, all those streets off of Broadway, right? Pick five streets. Mm -hmm. Go to tax search, go down history, go in the MLS first, and then you go to tax search and you go to history. Make sure it's not listed. If you're going to call them, you cannot okay. call the listing, but I want you to call them. I want you to get their number. You know how to search for the phone numbers? Tell us. White pages. There's several oh. ways you can get oh, them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Do that. Get the phone number, and I want you to call them up, and I want you to, before you call them, I want you to research the mortgage, how great the mortgage rates are. I want you to research, say you, you're working, give me a street off Broadway. Um, you're off Broadway, uh, Yerger. Okay. That street, I want you to take that street. Now what you do is you press on that expired listing, you press on the address mm -hmm. and then there's streets all around it. So I want you to take that street and I want you to work with four streets all around there and keep it in the same price range around 500. That's what the houses are there. They're like five, 600 around there. Yeah, that's right? exactly what they are. Because I was born and raised in Paramus. So okay. take, take that, take those streets, go to Go to those streets and pick mm -hmm. out, go history, go down all of them and pick out the ones that have expired. You'll see it. You'll see what okay. expired, and call them and speak to them and say, look, I know maybe you didn't have luck a year or two ago. Let me tell you what's going on right now. People are moving from Manhattan. The market has, it's sensational right now. Um, and give them stats, start giving them stats, give them valued information and say, look, I just want to come over. I have some clients that may be interested in your home. I need to preview it to see if it fits my clients, what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I might have to talk to my husband, get their number, say, fine, talk to your husband. Let me call you back tomorrow. If that's okay, I'll come and preview. So now you're establishing a relationship. You got your foot in the door and you say to them, I'd like to see this. And then, you know, call, start, start calling some agents and say, look, do you have anybody that needs to see Fairlawn or whatever? But mm -hmm. say, and they're going to get to like you and you're going to show experience and you're going to show what you can do for them. You'll get that listing. You mm -hmm. will get that listing. Okay. okay. I mean, yeah. just start. That's a great way to start. Get your foot in the door. Don't, don't call expires of yesterday. It's great to do that, but 
110 <laughs> agents have already called them in one day. You're, you're going to annoy them. And I call and I always say, am I the hundredth agent that's called you today? But please don't <laughs> hang up on me because and I have to tell you, I get so many listings like that. And then for sale by owners, oh my God, that's a whole nother thing. That's a mm -hmm. great thing. That's like my forte because for sale by owners, they are not ready, willing, and able buyers. There's no sense of urge urgency. Okay. They really, really don't want to hear from you because they don't want to pay your commission. But guess what? I can probably get you more. I can probably get you more than what you have your house listed for. And every single for sale by owner this year that I did, I got them more than what it was listed for them. I just did one. Mm -hmm. I got them more that honestly, and their backyard was on the parkway. I got them full price in one week. Their backyard is on the parkway. We're closing tomorrow, as a matter of fact. It's Bedford. I got them full price in one day. He has referred me two clients. Two clients, and I listed another one of theirs, and I'm listing another one. The other one's a million-dollar home in Rivervale. I got two clients from this for sale by owner that they were blown away because I got them what they wanted, and I showed them that I can do it, and you can do it. You can do it. So everyone tonight, try to have a little bit, do an expired, um, I'm gonna give you homework. Do expired, work on an expired from a year ago in the area. Um, Samir, where do you live? What town are you in, Samir? Is that you, Samir, are you there? He is uh, here. He's there. Samir, maybe he doesn't hear me. Peretti, yeah, are you there? You're muted, unmute yourself. Yes, I'm here. Okay, Peretti, I'll talk to you. Where do you live? Montvale. Oh, in Montvale. Oh, so you're talking to the number one agent in Montvale. I live in Montvale. Isn't that great? No, I, you know what? I wouldn't know those things if Colleen didn't knock on my door and say, Antoinette. <laughs> no, I, see your, I see your sign. You work a lot with uh, the buyers and I mean the, the builders yeah. in the area. Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because I didn't even know I was a top agent in Montvale. It doesn't matter <laughs> to me. We're all top agents. Definitely. It doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that I do my job the right way. But it's funny because Joanne maybe gives the info to Colleen and she'll come and tell me. And I'm like, really? Oh, wow. And you know, I try to impress that when I go on the listing appointment, but I never, I always say everyone's a top agent. Everyone is a, not just a good agent. We're all great agents. As long as we work together and build foundations. Montvale is a super town because it's a great commute to New York. Their tax rateable is incredible. Um, I just sold one on Hillside. It was so funny. I'm on Phyllis. Huh? I'm on Phyllis. Which oh, Phyllis Drive, yeah, which is like right off Hillside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice street also. So I sold him the house three years ago in the fours. He put some money into it. I said, we're going to list this for 648. He's like, what? I said, yeah, we're going to list it for 648. Well, I got him six and a quarter. He's like, I'm happy with six. And it's funny because he was just amazed. We just closed on it. But um, I've done so much in Montvale, some new constructions. It's such a great town because of the commute. So I impress. That's another thing when I show up or if I'm meeting a buyer um, or if I'm going to meet a seller that I'm going on a listing appointment, I have my stats with me of the schools, the busing, the train, and the sellers are on the way. They're like, wow, this is great. You're really full circle. So you just need to try to have information. Remember, education is power and information is power. So that's a powerful thing. But you should really concentrate on Montvale. Concentrate on all those great streets in Montvale. I mean, go on expireds from a year ago. Start calling. You know, say, look. Well, the few, um, I actually have a question for you. Yeah. Um, so I've been reaching out to like for sale by owners in Montvale. And I grew up in Washington Township in Westwood. Um, reaching out to people. But how do you... You know, I know you have 30 years I experience. I, have like I want to share that a year, About a year and a half uh, experience. But um, I'm getting like the people that from Westwood, I gave them like my backstory, how I grew up in the town. Like I would be happy to help, um, you know, even if they had any questions and whatnot. They were offering, you know, commission, but weren't really looking to um, have a real um, and then like I reached out to somebody in Washington Township and he was kind of short and was just like the property's already sold um, but like how do you get into the door when you're met with the resistance of yeah that's okay you won't be met with resistance if you use my technique and I love what you said about how you grew up and this and that but you know what 
that doesn't flick their back. They think it's great that you know the bus schedules and yeah. they think it's great that you know, you know, you love the town and hurrah, hurrah, and you love the, the, you know, the parade that they have every winter. And, you know, it's all great and it's juicy, but they don't want to hear that. They want to hear, you need to have that street. Say you called on Lafayette, right? right. Or you called on Oak, whatever street. Have the streets around it. Go in with your stats. Remember what I told you, numbers are very powerful and they don't lie. So you go in with those stats and you say, look, Mr. Jones, I just sold, you know, not you, five houses have just sold in your area. They sold asking and over asking. Give them the addresses, tell them what they sold for, the amount of days, go in with bing, 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 bing. Go in with valid information. Numbers it's don't new. lie. Go in strong like a powerhouse and say, I'm here to sell your home. We're probably going to get you asking or more. Don't even worry about it. We're going to do commission. Your commission will be covered because in this market, it's the most, it's the greatest market right now. Cumulative 2.6 interest rates. So you've got the best. It's a buyer's market and a seller's market. You need right. to go in there with motivational, mm -hmm. very motivational, legitimate stats. Okay. okay. I mean, it's clear that you were, I'm so happy that you rode your bike into the center of town. That's really nice. <laughs> I'm really happy that you grew up in Westwood and you enjoyed it. And my, I lived there for eight and a half years. It was a great town before right. I moved to Rivervale. They don't care. They yeah. want a buyer and they want that buyer to pay them full price or more. Okay. okay. They want a business person. Yeah. They want a business person. They want stats. Remember, you're going to leave them with something of value. You'll get that listing. You will get that listing. Okay. Yes, you will get it. But start with the expireds might be a little bit easier for you guys being that you're newbies. The expireds of a year ago might be a little bit of a, a softer, easier market to break into. Expireds from a year ago, year and a half. Year and a half, those people didn't get what they wanted. Now I can get you what you want. I can get you the price you want. Would you list your house with me? Yes. Okay, sold. Next question. Hello. Mike, what are you doing, Hi. Mike? Hello? Yes. Go ahead, Miriam. Ask your question. Miriam, okay. where are you? Who is yes. it? Yes, Miriam. I don't see you, Miriam. Are we here. Oh, there you are, hon. Go ahead. Uh, how do I look at the expire? How do you look up expires? Yeah. On the NJMLS. Okay. On the NJMLS, you have a category. There's a category, expires. There's sold. There's expireds, there's withdrawn. Press the E, there's expireds, and it'll give you all the expireds in the towns that you want to be in. Or the streets, go by the streets, that's easier. I'm go by go the towns. What, what town do you live in, Miriam? I live in Oradale. I, I have a lot of, uh, I, I have a, a few um, neighbors that are, that are all in the, um, yeah. they're gonna, I'm pretty sure that they're gonna send their homes, but yeah. Uh, how well, Miriam, I target Miriam, that? I'm going to give you a little secret. If you have, Oradell has a lot of elderly people, yes. Um, Oradell, River Edge, and Paramus are good areas. But when there's a snowstorm, that's when I get all my elders. They're sitting home. The snow is coming down hard. You have nobody to shovel. Everyone's making, you know, chocolate chip cookies that day and drinking hot chocolate and playing out in the snow. I'm calling. I'm calling everybody with the old names, the old fashioned names. I go on tax search and I call all the Hildas and the, all the old names, Myrtle, Bertram, all the old fashioned names. And I tell them, so I can probably sell your home. I'm sure you want to be in a nice warm climate. I have a whole script for that. That's how I get my elders. But in Oriental, you'll have no problem. You'll have no problem because there are a lot of elders and you should call them and you should tell them how you could help them. Now with elders, you can help them with their move, you can arrange it, you can really help them. And that would be something good for you to do. But you should also try expires because Oradell is a great town, great commute to the city. Okay, so you said that to get to, get to the spies, I go to the New Year's MLS. And yes, do you know how to operate, Pat? They don't know how to operate their engine? Um, um, she should. Uh, she should. Did you I'm take sorry, Paragon? Have Miriam, you, <laughs> have you, you taken got to go on the MLS every day that's what antoinette said every day if Miriam, you're have you sure, taken paragon i i take the orientation one the two orientations i took okay and they taught you how to do cmas and all that 
No. That's really, you need to be on your NJMLS three, four, five times a day. A day. So tonight, fiddle around with it and go on the expireds. You know, it's so sad that we can't have in-person classes right now. It's so difficult, and I feel like you're held back a little bit. But try to go on the NJMLS and explore. Explore. The expires are there. Okay. And then you go to Oradell, and it'll come up. And then you can, you can, you know, they're not going to tell you exactly when they expired. You have to go through each one in certain areas and streets. But just pick some, pick five, six streets and go on tax search and start playing with tax search. Go on, go on tax search and press history and... And you know what? You'll you'll navigate towards it. Yes. Anybody else? Anybody else have questions? Mabel? Where do you live, Mabel? Maybe she's Nabila. On yeah, Nabila. Unmute. Hi. Um, Hi. I'm from Rockland County, New York. Okay. And yeah. you do so you're licensed in New York and New yes. Jersey? No, not New Jersey. Okay, not yet. strictly in New York. All right. So you have a lot of movement going on in Rockland yes. County. A lot of sales. Yes. More sellers than buyers, right? Yeah. Yeah. People want to, they're trying to move out for the tax reasons and things like that. Yeah. I yeah. have a lot of Rockland County people coming over the border. So that's good. You can really concentrate on listing, you know, get your niche market. Everyone should create a niche market and go for it. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Antoinette, you mentioned that you have a team of painters, uh, yes. power washers. How did you get that list together? Oh, we, Andrew and I put it together and it's so great because it's like a, just makes everything seamless. People don't know who to call. Like it, we have two teachers that are power washers, their husband and wife team. And not only <laughs> that, I have a listing I'm getting next week in Malawi. It's an elderly woman. She has a handicapped daughter and she needs some big things moved in boxes. She was so delighted because I called her yesterday and she's like, I don't know what to do. I don't have anybody to help me. And I said, you know what? Your power washers that are coming. I said, your power washers, the husband. Oh, I, I, that's not the power washers. I have husband and wife power washers and I have husband and wife cleaning crew. She's in a condo. She doesn't need power washers. I said, your cleaning crew that I recommended, the husband, he will do movement for you. He'll move all the boxes downstairs into the basement. She was so delighted. She's like, oh my God, I didn't know who to call. I called, you've got junk. They don't do that. She goes, I don't know who to call. And I saved her like, she's like, oh my God, now I can sleep tonight. She called them and they're going to, the, hus the wife's going to do the cleaning. The husband's going to help her clean because they want the windows done. But he's also at the end of the job going to do all the movement of boxes. So we really get involved, you know. We, we, honestly, we get into their closets, okay? You're into their home. You become, their home becomes like your home. You really get into their closets, okay? So you have to really feel part of the deal, okay? You really, really do. Any other, yes, you go. And so you mentioned virtual staging. Uh, that's really intriguing. Can you explain a little bit more about the, how do you find companies that can help you do this? Because I have a couple of customers that have yeah. empty homes. Oh, good. Need okay, staging. I'll get the information from Andrew and he'll send it to you. Okay. My son, Andrew, I have your email, right? Perfect, yes. So, you know what, just retext me your email just to have it. Oh, I have you your email. Because you've emailed these sheets. Yeah, you've done my open oh, houses. I have your email. Andrew, tonight, um, we'll send you who we use. They're very inexpensive and they're great. They're great, great, great. If yeah. you, you could send it to me, Antoinette, and I'll broadcast, I'll email All right. How about if I send it to Pat? Uh, yep, I'll send it to Pat. And then she'll send it to everybody because virtual staging is a nice little touch when you go on a, on a listing appointment. You're, you know, you're like one step ahead. All right, everybody's doing the drone. Everybody's doing all that. But when you see a house that needs kind of help, like I, I listed a house in a town and they were very, 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 they're very cultural people. And I actually felt kind of bad to tell them that we really have to move. The furniture was gigundo. You couldn't even walk around the room. And I felt so bad. And I said, you know, we really have to move these sofas out of here. We can't even walk around. We virtually staged it. And let me tell you, that's when we got the contract. It really worked. So you give people a vision of not this heavy, clunky furniture. Us as realtors, we can do, we can visualize and see that because we go into houses every day, but buyers can't. They're like, oh my God, this is too, there's not enough room in this room, but there really is. So 
you know, and then of course, front doors are always a wreck. I don't care what house you go in, unless I, and people, some people are really good about it, but some front doors just need painting. Like that's the first thing I look at. You know, I want a nice wreath on the door. I want, I want two, you know, mums in the front of the house now. Um, when I do an open house, I bake an apple in the microwave. I cut the core out. I bring some cinnamon and I bake an apple in the, in the microwave. So when they come in, it smells like apple pie you know, um, or I bake some homemade chocolate chip cookies that day and I put them out for the kids. You know, now with, with COVID, it's a little different. I, I stopped the cookies because nobody should be touching anything or whatever, but I do bake the apple. I do bake the apple for that nice smell. You know, you have to create a stage, right? Buying a home is emotion. So if you create this nice, warm, fuzzy feeling, it works, it works. Um, I want to, I mean, we can, you know, I've given you so much today. Um, I, I want to get into this material on, on this, but I think we should, I don't know. I think we should talk more. And then my next, my next meeting, I think we should, you know, we can get into, um, how to farm prospect and lead gen. Lead generation is very, very important. When you have listings, you're in business. When you don't have listings, you're basically out of business, but that doesn't mean you're not a realtor. You can be out of business. You're just not lead generating the right way. You're not creating business. You're at the mercy of putting offers in on houses and you could be one of five offers right now. It's a tough business for buyers. So that's why you wanna be in control and you wanna to try to create listings if you can. That's really where you wanna be, but that's gonna take you time. I mean, I started off with buyers myself for the first year or two. It's not easy. And then I went into, then I felt good enough about generating listings. But the listings that I did get prior to the two years of me when I started were people that I knew that knew me. They knew my ethics, they knew my work ethics. Yes, for her Hi, um, um, that's another thing I wanted to find out. We were discussing more about the seller side. Um, and you just said that in the start, you started as a buyer. Buyers, you should work with buyers, yeah. So um, how do we go about like, you know, making the, the, the leads for the buyers? Like well, the leads for the buyers is pretty simple. You start shadowing first to do open houses to learn. Right. And then when you do open houses, there's a whole dialogue when, you, when someone comes into an open house, providing they don't have an agent, you need to create a little bit of confidence with them, right? You want them in your hand in the first 30 seconds, but you need to not jump on them, take them through the home and you're talking about their children or where they live and some of their likes and dislikes. I've never, honestly, I get every, everybody that comes into my open house yes. that I'm there. And if I'm working with them, we're talking with them by the time I get to the open house, they're my buyers. I don't lose any buyers. I don't lose any buyers because I give them this little vogue of confidence. If they're not working with someone, I let them know how much I can help them. I immediately offer to set them up an automatic receive. I get their criteria. When they write their name on my sign-in sheet, I make sure I can understand their print. I make sure I get, I understand their email. I rewrite it if I have to. I get their phone number and I tell them, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to set you up like a realtor, as I get the listings new, you're going to get it. And then when you see something you like, I want you to send me the MLS and we'll get out there tomorrow and we'll start looking. It works all the time. It works. Antoinette, if I could add to that, yes. you know, we've got the KW app. If you've got their emails, you can set them up on Neighborhood Nurtures. We're coming Andrew does Nurtures. that, yeah. And don't forget your sphere of influence. Open houses are a little tough to come by right now because houses are selling so quickly, but you've got a sphere of influence. And I'm going to go back to Antoinette's analogy of the uh, phone book. If you took that database of yours, there are buyers and sellers in that database. You just have to go find them. You have to go yeah. identify them. You do. There's so much buyers out there and so many sellers right now. Everybody's doing moving, shaking. It's so much. Find, it's easy to find the sellers with expired, with um, FISBOs and with open houses, with uh, not open houses, sorry, um, with, with lead gen. With, but when I start thinking about the buyers nowadays, whenever, I mean, I did a couple of open houses for you. Um, mostly everyone is coming in with, with an agent. agent. 
they not coming with i mean they have an agent they're working yeah. with so it's so hard to you know just like okay we were thinking like you know maybe that person won't come with an agent but they do but um like you were saying like people from new york city uh, are coming towards the suburbs right now How let me tell you let me tell you sunday i showed a home an open house i took my clients out late sunday it was a house that listed in hillsdale in the 900s there were 15 cars lined up, okay? Wow. Out of those 15 cars, we had to wait 20 to 30 minutes to get in. They only allowed three or four people in at a time. I could have stood there and I could have gotten every one of those buyers and I didn't because it wasn't my open house. I felt it wasn't the right thing to do. You know what the conversation was? Oh my God, we're so scared. Our house is sold. We don't know where we're gonna go. Oh my God, where are we gonna buy? Where are we gonna buy? I'm saying to myself, oh boy, she's gonna have a field day, this gal that did the open house. How many buyers is she going to get to them? It is possible. Even if you get one, if you get one buyer, say you get six people come in with agents, but one doesn't have an agent and that's your buyer, that's all you need. It only takes one. It takes one to get started because that buyer might become also a seller and then you might be listing their home and that seller, that seller is going to create a lot of business for you. Okay, there's buyers out there. Yeah. So Antoinette, if I could also add, yeah. and I'm going to step forward, um, boast, boosting an ad on Facebook, on your Facebook business page with a 20 mile radius will cover Manhattan. And I'm sure if you asked Ant Antoinette, does she have a listing that you could boost? I'm putting you on the spot, Antoinette. You all can boost mine. I don't care. There you go. There, you, there go. you go. And you're not portraying that it's yours, just that you want to find a buyer for this wonderful home. Um, Please, and sell my listings. I'm getting three more next week. I'm sell gonna them. That. I'm gonna one of the too. girls in our office drove past one of my signs. I didn't even list it yet. And she's already got a cash buyer for it. One of our little sweethearts in our office. So we'll yes. find your uh, open houses and we'll post it and you'll get buyers. Yeah, or, or don't even post the open house, just that the house you is You can't available. post the open house, but you can post that this, is a, this is a listing in our office. It's okay. Right. Right. Yeah. I have to get my son's permission on that because he's very fussy about the way things get posted. Andrew is very fussy. He likes everything done perfect. So if so anybody- talk to me before any of you do it, yeah. just to make yeah. sure that the picture is appropriate. He's very fussy, yeah. Yeah, he keeps me in line. But he's technology driven where I'm not. But that's very good. Yeah. Just call me and let me know that you're going to do it. That's all. Okay, good. Just Anybody? give plenty of time to give Andrew time for you guys to interact with Andrew to see if everything yeah, meets. Just call me and I'll set it up to you. No worries. You know. Antoine? Yes. How, how you doing? It's Kate Lee. Hello. Sorry, I can post my picture because I'm doing something. Um, that's okay. Are you real estate uh, license in New York? What is it, hon? Are you real estate license in New York? Do, Am I going to have a license in New York? No, yeah, do, do, you uh, do you have your li a license in New York? Are you do? Oh no, in New York I can only you? handle New Jersey. Okay, okay. Because I was very interesting to post your listing on Facebook. Oh yeah, no, I don't have New New York. I don't do any business there. I just work with the buyers that come from New York. So and then. For your listing, we can go to your page, your Facebook page, like it, and we'll see the listings over there. Um, how do we go about knowing your listings? You have to call me. Okay. You have to call me and let me know that you want to do or it. Or do a search on the MLS, because you, if you look under additional criteria, you can search by listing agent. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Anybody else have questions? Carmel? Oh, go ahead, Peretti. Oh, That's your first do. name? Is your no, first last name? name? Last name. Oh. First name is DJ. DJ. I have a DJ. My grandson. Dominic Joseph. That's my grandson. No. Oh, wow. He's not Dominic Joseph. He's Dominic Jeffrey. Okay. So my son, Andrew, who's my partner in business, was a DJ. He is a DJ for Posh, but he does this full time. Okay. Thank God he had this. You know Andrew. Do you know Andrew? Yes. So, so he said, because my other son is a DJ in Vegas. Says, he told his brothers, my firstborn son, I'm claiming DJ. <laughs> you know, I'm claiming DJ and that's it. And my son in Vegas named his son CJ. For with okay. Son. But I, I thought it was going to be a Dominic. Uh, I was praying he was going to use Dominic and he, he named it after my father. 
and his whole son, and his wife's father is um, Jeffrey. So Got it's it. DJ. And my father. Yeah, my dad was, was Dominic, and my grandfather was Joseph. So. Well, that's exactly what, and Andrew's grandfather is Joseph, but I'm glad they chose his wife's dad. So DJ, go ahead. Uh, so my question was, um, I've had a lot of experience where if you're at an open house or um, and you get somebody that's not working with the agent, um, and then you know you start working with them, you're sending them stuff, and then they kind of just like jump ship or just ghost you and just grab somebody. Else. You know, can um, they get like the listing agent of the house or something? So you're doing all this work. You know, and then all of a sudden they just like disappear and work with somebody else. It happened like yeah. um, well, with, with a couple that was waiting to sell their house. So I put in an offer with them on a house. <laughs> um, and then they had a contingency that to sell their place. <laughs> and then they told me they were coming back to Oradell to look. And then they wound up just calling like, you know, whoever could get them in the house the earliest, even though I had made time to, you know, set a time time on the weekend to work with them that relates to the to the saying buyers are liars unfortunately we don't want to think like that there is a form that you can get them to sign yes do you recommend them having them the sign that like right away like yeah you should get them to sign it at the open house i've okay. never used it i never used it you know i have a saying that a client worth losing is not worth having right. so that's up to you i know it's hurtful You'll get a lot of those hurtful moments where, you know, you have a house listed and it expires and then a new agent comes along, lists it for 30,000 less and it sells in one day. Right. You know, because they didn't want to listen to you, just, they didn't believe you. Just get out there and you will sharpen your skills. I have, it, I have another skills. saying, if you throw enough of you know what on the wall, it will stick. It'll stick. <laughs> It'll stick, honey. So you need, I'm old school. So you need right. to just keep going. You need to just create a lot, a lot of business around you. Like right. okay. a lot of business. Yeah. That's Thank what you. Yeah. You're welcome. Anybody else? Brittany? Brittany, where do you live? Yes. Hi. I live in Verona, but um, I'm from Oradell and I'm going to be moving back to Oradell. So that's why I wanted to join uh, Kelly Williams. Yeah, Oradell's a great area. Oradell, Paramus, River Edge. Mm -hmm. It's a great area. So you should start concentrating on that area. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, yeah. And the street, you know, the streets that you live on and the streets that you're mm -hmm. aware of and you know, you know, start start calling those expired and go on for sale by owner site. That's what I'm going to do. I mean, yeah. you've been so motivating. So after this call, I'm going to start doing that exactly like you said. One second. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, this is important. Andrew, I'm just on a Zoom call. Can I call you back? Do you think we should have Antoinette back, guys? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to. All right. Yeah, All right. I, I would love yeah. to. I would, I'm sorry I kept you over. I could go on and on and on and on and on for hours. Um, it's my passion to help every one of you to create a successful business. It's about caring and sharing. That's what our company is about. Our company is about that, our culture.